Just thinking about holding your hands in a hand position to play piano introduces tension that's going to interfere with your playing. If you're holding your hands in a position, you can't play freely. Good piano technique is all about moving efficiently, not holding. So the best hand shape to start with is the one you have when your arms are hanging by your side and your shoulders down. When people find out I'm a piano teacher, sometimes they show me their hands and they look like this. There are two problems here, stretching and twisting. Stretching is when your fingers are spread apart even a little. Twisting is when your wrist goes out of alignment, either up, down, left, or right. Stretching and twisting can be painful and they make it harder to play with a great tone. Keep your fingers loosely together like a paw and keep your hand, wrist, and forearm aligned. Center your forearm behind the finger and key you're playing and you're going to sound great with less effort. Subscribe so you won't miss my long videos and my next shorts where I'll show you how to move to play better. Robert here and I'd like you to meet my teaching assistant, Ms. Armstrong. Sometimes I tell my students she belonged to my last student who didn't practice. Today, Ms. Armstrong and I are going to show you about forearm rotation, one of the most powerful movements you have to play the piano or keyboard. Ever heard anyone who plays piano complain about their wrists getting tight and hurting, or have you experienced that yourself? Using forearm rotation with awareness will help you sound better and keep that from happening. Forearm rotation happens before every note you play, and the simplest way to experience it is to sit down with your elbows in near your body and put your arms in the position you'd use to drive a car. Notice how your thumbs are on top of your hands with your thumbnails facing up. Now drop your hands into your lap and see how your thumbs are facing each other. Forearm rotation is what gets you from one position to the other. In the next video, Ms. Armstrong and I will show you how to use this motion to play better. Click subscribe so you don't miss my longer piano videos. Robert here with my assistant, Ms. Armstrong, and let's take a closer look at forearm rotation, which is something that every pianist, young or old, needs to know about. First, I'll show you the mechanics, and then I'll go to the piano and show you some examples. It's really vital to understand these forearm motions because think about it, there's no way for your fingers to play the notes you want them to unless your arm gets them in the vicinity first. Rotation is the fastest forearm motion, and it's the only one that's contained inside your arm. It's great for covering large distances and useful for five finger patterns too. It's controlled by the radius, the bone on the thumb side of your forearm. So here's your radius and it comes around on top and you'll notice that it does not connect bone to bone with your upper arm. It's the ulna, the bone on the pinky side that does that. Every forearm rotation to play piano is really two motions, an upswing preparatory motion followed by a downswing playing motion. The preparatory motion is always in the opposite direction of the playing motion. Like when you play golf or tennis, if you want to hit the ball so it goes right, your first motion is actually to the left. Hands are mirror images. So for your right hand, playing towards pinky means prep left to play right. For your left hand, it means prep right to play left. When prepping and playing toward pinky, allow your upper arm to respond to the forearm rotation by moving away from your body slightly, like that. Boom. When prepping and playing toward thumb, that's not necessary as the thumb easily rotates upward toward your pointer finger, like this. At faster speeds, these motions may be so tiny they're imperceptible to someone watching. Let's look at some examples. I'm going to start with an example of a two octave arpeggio so you can see how forearm rotation helps you cover long distances on the keyboard. So C major, C, E, G starts with a thumb. So that'll be a prep right, play left. Play right, play right, play left, play right, Play right, play right, play left, 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 right, right, left. Now, every one of those motions need a pre needs a preparation in the opposite direction. So, bear with me. It goes like this. Prep right, play left, prep left, play right, prep left, play right. Prep right, play left, prep left, play right, prep left, play right, prep left, play right, 
prep right, play left, prep right, play left, prep right, play left, prep left, play right, prep right, play left, prep right, play left. Now, of course, that's a huge mouthful. However, once you do this enough, you start to get the hang of it and it becomes second nature. Of course, if you're already playing the passage the way you want to play it, you might not want to think about these things. However, this is super useful if you're stuck in a passage and it's just not working. Thinking through the rotations can help you get through it, whether it's beginning repertoire or even advanced repertoire. I'm going to do a, a two octave arpeggio with my left hand now so you can see it from the other angle. So now we'll play right, left, left, right, left, 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 right, 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 left, right, right. So I wanted to start with big arpeggios because once you know how to do that, then when you apply the principle to uh, smaller scales, it becomes so, so easy. So I'm going to use a five finger pattern from Minuet and Rondo by Rameau. You may have heard me play this piece in some of my other videos. But, so we'll start with right hand. We'll play right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, 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 left, 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 right, left, right, left, left. So at speed. It really feels pretty effortless. And of course you have to plan both hands. So this is left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, and then coordinate putting the hands together. Feels great, sounds great. Try it. Leave questions in the comments if you want help applying this to whatever piece you're working on, and I'll see if I can help you with that. Of course, forearm rotation is not an isolated motion. It works in conjunction with three other forearm motions that I'll show you in the next videos. So click subscribe, because if you play piano, you'll benefit from understanding the playing mechanism better. Understanding your forearm up-down motions is a great way to get control over your playing. Now I know this is something a lot of people can benefit from because I hear many people complain that they don't have any strength in their pinky and ring fingers. But you don't need any strength to play with those fingers really. Think about uh, if you just lift your arm and let it fall. What if you did that on the piano? That's a thousand times more strength than you would ever need to play the piano. So in a previous video, I talked about how the radius, the bone on the thumb side of your arm, controls forearm rotation. Well, it's the ulna, the bone on the pinky side, that controls your up-down motions. Uh, let me get my assistant to show you how that works. Okay, so here's your pinky. Here's your ulna it comes down and hooks into your upper arm. That's your elbow. The radius does not connect there. The ulna does. So this motion can get you tremendous strength. So if you're struggling with weak pinky and ring finger, it's not a matter of musculature at all. It's a matter of using up-down motions and learning to balance on those fingers. So with the C-sharp minor prelude by Rachmaninoff that I started with, I'm using up-down motions to get weight into the keys. And with these octaves, I'm also using rotation. That allows me to relax between each octave and still play accurately and get a big tone. You can use the same technique if you're playing, I don't know, Someone Saved My Life Tonight by Elton John. Let's see. Do you see that? I'm falling through the air.
and with my right hand, I'm using up down motion on these big octaves and a hinging motion and falling into each chord and that allows me to play accurately and efficiently. A lot of us never learn about up down motions because we're taught with these five finger patterns. <laughs> Terrible. The two things five finger patterns do that's not good is first, they lead me to stretching. <laughs> Second, I'm not using my up down motions at all. I think teachers think that we can be more accurate if we keep our fingers close to the keys, but that's not true at all. Even little children can have great accuracy by falling through the air onto the keys. So up down motions are very important. Have fun with experimenting with them. Robert here, and the third forearm movement we're going to talk about is lateral motion, left and right. So this is where a lot of people can get into trouble when they're playing scales. If they try to play a scale without understanding where their forearm needs to go, it leads to all kinds of twists and stuff that hurts and leads to inaccuracies. So if you want to keep your forearm aligned, you have to balance behind each key that you're playing. And this is great for repertoire like the minuet and rondo that I've used in some of the other videos. Even for just a five finger pattern like that, I'm not trying to stay stuck over these five notes. I'm balancing behind each note, which requires a little rotation before every note, but it also requires some lateral motion of my forearm. You can see when my pinky is here, my forearm is here. When I'm balanced for thumb, my forearm is here. Now, my upper body has to respond to that forearm motion so that I can stay aligned. This is really important for maybe bigger scales, like a uh, three or four octave scale. So I want to start leaned very left. As I move right, my upper body is responding to that lateral motion of my forearms. Hopefully you can see it in the overhead view up there. And hopefully I'm doing a good job of keeping my forearms aligned through lateral left-right motion. Uh, it's also good for covering bigger distances like in the Bach, uh, F major, two-part dimension. There again, I'm using rotation, left, right, left, right, left, right. But I'm also using, I'm also using up and down actually. Down. There's a little down on every note. And there's also left, right, left, right, left, right motion. So have fun with using left, right motions in your piano play. Robert here, and today we're going to talk about the fourth and final forearm motion, in and out. This one's one of my favorites because you can do some really fun sounding stuff with it. First, I'm going to show you how it works and then show you something that you can do with it. You want to feel weight in your elbow for this to function efficiently. See, if your arm is hanging right down by your side, you can do this in and out motion very easily. But if you're holding your elbows out, it gets weird. This does not feel as good. So, you want to feel gravity in your elbows hanging down by your sides. And there's a couple of reasons you want to be able to use in and out motions on the piano. One is for black keys. Obviously, you want to be able to move in to play those black keys. Another reason has to do with short fingers and long fingers. On the piano, keys are levers. So, you play, key, play notes most efficiently if you play them kind of near the edge. Not on the very edge, because that doesn't feel secure, but kind of near the edge. So if I'm playing a piece like this minuet and rondo, I don't want to stay in the same position with my forearm with regards to in and out. 
I want to start in for pinky, come out for middle finger, big in for thumb, out for middle, in, out, in, out. If you watch my elbow there, you can see how much in and out motion, motion I'm using. It helps me to play evenly. Now, for the fun stuff, you can do a sound that's a lot like a horn rip if you know how to play in to your pinky. That's what I was using on root beer rag at the beginning of the video. Now, that's hard to do if I don't know how to play in from my long finger to my short pinky. But if I know how to do that, it's really easy. Another place this shows up is in the Rondo Alaterca, Mozart. There's a pinky, so I want to play in for that. But listen to this next part. That's another rip figure. And playing in towards pinky is how you can do that and have it sound great. And easily. Have fun with that. And now for this final video on your forearm motions, I'm going to show you how to combine all four. So I'm going to use this kind of famous piece, the Arabesque by Berg Mueller. It goes like this. So we start with a rotation, prep right to play left, and these chords in the left hand also prep to play towards thumb. Chords and intervals always prep and play towards thumb. So we also have left right motion. Left, right, left. You can see my forearm moving laterally. So that's rotation, left, right. We also start up and fall down. So you can see my up down motion. And I think the most fun thing about this piece is the playing in towards pinky like that. It really gives a nice ping to that last note of each phrase. And it's a lot of fun to play and it sounds great. So let's see, all together it sounds like this. So have fun combining your forearm motions. Don't try to think about all four at once because it's too much. But pick the one forearm motion that you think might have the most benefit for the passage that you're working on and apply it and see how it feels and see how it sounds. Have fun with it.